I'm gonna sing till my heart starts change. Oh, I'm gonna worship till I mean every word. Cause the way I feel and the fear I'm facing doesn't change who you are or what you deserve. Give you my worship, and you still deserve it. You're worthy, you're worthy, worthy of my soul. I pour out your praises, and blessing and break it. You're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy of my soul. is gone 
fills the street to look upon the one who bled to save me and walk with him for all eternity. There will be a day when I'll bow before him. There will be a day when death will be no more. Standing face to face with he who died and rose again. Holy, holy is the Lord. In every prayer, we prayed in desperation. Come on. The songs of faith, we sing through doubt and fear. Welcome to Highlands Online. So glad you're with us today, whether you're watching on TV or our online campus or Facebook or YouTube or wherever or in the future. Hey, so glad you're with us. If we haven't met before, my name's James and I'm our messaging director here. Uh, you might see me all over the place. Sometimes I'm on stage on the weekends playing. Sometimes I'm running sound or switching cameras or uh, speaking. I don't know. You never know where I'm going to be, um, but I'm glad to be with you today. 
Uh, we just are coming off of last weekend with Dr. Wahid Waba, who had an incredible message about investing and building in the next generation. And uh, all of our G3 pastors were here. Uh, we just got back from Atlanta for the 4G3 Gala, which was amazing. And, and we had our night of worship, and it was so good to see some of you all in person. Uh, we had around 600 people come to that event, which was so fun. Uh, it was just a great night of worshiping Jesus together, spending time in prayer and community and sharing with each other and, and getting to sing some songs together. It's been three years since we had a night of worship and it was great to be back. And so uh, if you got to come, I hope you had an amazing time. And if you didn't, uh, hey, make sure to come to the next one. I don't know when that's gonna be. It'll be a little while before we do another one, but we had a great time. I had food trucks, it was awesome. I had this like grilled cheese barbecue sandwich it was good, so, uh, but I hope you were able to make it, and if not, hey, make plans to come to our next one. We're back this week with Flip the Script. We're continuing our Beatitude study. Pastor Allen is back with us today, and we're talking about what it means to be righteous. It says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. So we're gonna dig into that with Pastor Allen. Jump back into that. Hey, if you aren't a part of the study, but you wanna join, we took a week off with Wahid, but we are back with our group study. You can do that online, or you can do it out of campus. All you need to do is go to, you know exactly where it is, the hub, hf.church slash hub will get you there. Uh, go to the hub and find, pick a campus uh, wherever you want to be near and it will show you those that information and you can join in those groups. You don't have to come every single week. Each one of these Beatitudes are kind of encapsulated inside themselves. So if you missed one or missed all of them and you want to jump in now, hey, we've got five more to go. So don't miss out on this. This is a great opportunity to build community, uh, to make some friends, to connect with other people. And if you want to do it online, you can do that as well. We've got a great group that's going online. So check that out. I would love to help you get connected in any way. So if you have any questions, please reach out to me. You can find me online, shoot me a message, just comment in the chat if you have any questions, if you're watching on our online campus. And uh, I just I would, I would, just want to encourage you to be a part of those groups. That's where you can really connect with other people. So it's gonna be good. Again, back on Flip the Script. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Let's get into it. Well, hey everybody, man, it's so uh, so good to see you. Have I told you how much I love you guys? You you guys are incredible. Just thank you so much for being at our in-person locations. You folks that join me on TV every week and online, uh, thank you so much for your encouragement. We want to serve you and be there for you. So let us know how we can pray for you. Let us know how we can help you. By all means, we want you to call Highlands home. Had the opportunity to be at our Bristol location a couple of weeks ago, and it was awesome, amazing, you know, just incredible. And uh, so I look forward to being Bluefield my next uh, weekend off. Look forward to that. It was Marion a few weeks ago. So uh, God's just doing some neat things around our locations. Wasn't it amazing? Uh, Pastor Wahid last weekend and to have our G3 conference. I mean, that is like Christmas and my birthday and my anniversary all rolled up into one day. It was an amazing, amazing week with those guys. And then the night of worship. My goodness, if you missed that, uh, what were you thinking? It was off the charts. It was amazing. So uh, we have so many talented musicians and uh, folks who just learn and teach us how to worship God. Uh, it was just a great, great night. So today we're back in our Flip the Script series on the Beatitudes. And before I get into it, I want to ask you a question. Um, have you ever, uh, this happens to me most time at night before I get ready to go to bed. Have you ever gone to your fridge and you've, uh, you're hungry and you, you sort of open the door in the fridge and you sort of scour from top to bottom and you're looking for something, you know. You're, you're hungry for something and, and nothing really jumps out at you. 
and you're hungry, but you just don't exactly know what you're hungry for. A anybody ever do that besides me? Can I just, can I see your hands? Uh, all right, I'm in, the, I'm in the right house today because I've got a bunch of liars in here. I know you guys have thought about doing that, and I know that that happens to all of us. Well, uh, it's really neat of the beatitude that I come in contact with today from the Scripture because Jesus says that to have a spiritual hunger, just like we have physical hunger, is a good thing, that we need to have a spiritual hunger to know him. Uh, so much so that he put it in the Beatitudes as one of the eight ways to find happiness in your life, to be blessed in your life. So look, let's look at this, Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. This is what Jesus says. He says, God blesses those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they'll be filled. Now, maybe you're new to Highlands or you're new to the church. You're still on your journey. You haven't accepted or trusted Jesus Christ today. I want to tell you, man, you're at the right place. And you come to a word like righteousness and you think, what in the world does righteousness mean? I mean, righteousness, it's a big word and it's in the Bible all the time. And it's used hundreds and hundreds of times in the Bible. The Bible says that God is righteous. Uh, the Bible teaches that God's word is righteous. The scripture says that when we talk about this idea of righteousness, that God actually rewards righteousness. Uh, he calls Abraham righteous. Noah is considered a righteous man. Matter of fact, in uh, Psalm 23, the most famous Psalm in the Old Testament, David says this, he, speaking of God, leads me in the paths of righteousness. So what in the world does that word mean? Well, let me give you a, a simple definition of what it means. This is it. Righteousness simply means being right with God, being right with God, just simply living right as God intends. Now, you may be here, and you might be thinking, well, preacher, why in the world do I even care about being right with God? I mean, particularly when none of my friends care about being right with God, they could care less about God. My worker, my co-workers, they, they could care less about being right with God. I mean, much of the world obviously has turned their back on God and the church. So why should I be concerned about being right with God? Why should I give a hoot about being right with God? Well, in a nutshell, I want to give you two reasons. Here's the first one. It's the only way to live, number one. And number two, it's the only way to heaven. It's the only way to heaven. Notice Proverbs chapter 12, look at verse 28. Righteousness is the road to life and the path to immortality, which is eternity, which is heaven. So what do we, what do we mean when, you know, when, uh, when he's writing this verse? It means that when you're disconnected from God, you're not really living. You're just existing. And what I find with so many people who watch us on TV, and I'm not, you know, not trying to be offensive to many of you, but it's your start in your journey to know Jesus. And so many of you have written and you've emailed and you've shared with me that you're just sort of existing in your life. And you know there's something more to life, but you're just sort of living for the weekend. You have no connection with God whatsoever. So life is not about the acquisition of things or the achievement of goals what I am here to tell you today, what Jesus says is life is about connecting and getting to know God, the God who loves you and the God who made you for a purpose. And here's the truth, guys. You're not really living until you are right with God, until you have the righteousness of God and you're connected to God. And being connected to God is important because it's the only way to get to heaven. If you're not connected to God, you're not going to make it to heaven. Now, let's talk about this just for a minute, because I think this is really important for us to understand. God is not going to force you to go to heaven. He's just not. Now, he wants you to be in heaven, but he's not going to force you to go to heaven. So you know what God does? He gives you a choice. You can spend your entire life connected to God, or you can spend your entire life disconnected to him. I mean, isn't it true? If you want to rebel against God and you want to ignore God your entire life, you can do that. You can pretend God doesn't exist. You can disobey God. You can be apathetic, agnostic toward God. 
God never forces anybody to love him because it's not love if you're forced. So God gives you a choice. And if you say, well, I don't want to love God. I don't want to live for God. I want to live my own life. I want to do my own thing. You know what God says? Uh, <clears throat> this dates me, but God says like that old Burger King commercial, have it your way. Hey, if that's, if that's the way you want to live your life and you don't want to acknowledge me in any of your life, even though I created you, you know what God says? Your choice. You can have it your way. The only problem is one day you're going to stand before God and God's going to say, all right, you didn't want to connect with me on earth. You didn't want to be close to me down there on earth. So why in the world would you want to be close to me now in eternity? Have it your way. And you know what? You will be, according to the Bible, eternally separated from God. That makes sense, doesn't it? I mean, why in the world would anybody say, I want to live my entire life separated from God, being my own God, doing my own thing, having it my own way? But now when I die, I want to be in God's presence. When I die, I want to be in God's, I want to be, I want to have the presence of God's love. I want to go to heaven when I die. Really? <laughs> if you don't go to heaven, that's your choice. It's on you. So God says that the way that we encounter a fulfilled life and the way that we actually go to heaven is when we get connected to him, when we are righteous in God's sight. So how in the world does God make us right with himself? I mean, what's God's plan for us to become righteous, for you to become righteous? Because it's important. If righteousness is the only way to live, and if righteousness is the only way to heaven, then how does God make us righteous? Well, it's called the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. And I want to be real basic today. I just want to go back to the very precepts of the scripture, what it's all about. And I want to give you the ABCs. This is what I learned years and years and years ago. It's never changed in all these years. They're very, very basic, but I want you to just think on these three things. All right, here's the first one. Here's the good news of the gospel. Here's God's plan to make us right with him. Here's number one. The first part of the gospel is I'm a sinner. Now, we don't like that word today, do we? Our culture, we don't even like to hear that stuff. What? You're calling me a sinner? And I cannot make myself righteous. I just can't. That doesn't sound very good, but the fact is, I can't make myself righteous. I'm completely inept to do that. And why is that? Because I'm imperfect. We've all blown it. We've all sinned, guys. We've all made mistakes, every one of us. So how do I, an imperfect person, become perfect, righteous in the eyes of God? And why is that important? Well, I'll tell you why. Because heaven is a perfect place. And the Bible says in heaven, there's no sin. You know, there's no sadness. There's no sorrow. There's no evil. There's no gossip. There's no hatred. There's no racial prejudice. Heaven, there's no injustices. No sin. And when you hear that, you go, uh-oh, no sin in heaven? Mm, <laughs> I don't have a chance then. Heaven is a perfect place. Well, here's the problem. If heaven is perfect, we all know we're imperfect, right? I mean, surely I don't have to convince you that you've made some mistakes in life. You are, by nature, a sinner. We've all made mistakes. So if God were to let imperfect people into heaven, I mean, it would ruin it. Uh, heaven would be no better than earth. I mean, we still deal in heaven with everything we're dealing with down here, all the chaos and sadness and injustice and racial divides and all the things that break our hearts here. Well, we would have that in heaven. Who would want to go to heaven? Well, I don't think it'd be a place that most of us would want to go. Heaven is perfect. Heaven is absolutely perfect. And yet we, we're sinful. Notice here in Romans chapter three, verse 20. It says, no one can ever be made right in God's sight, that's righteous, by doing what his law commands. Because the more we know God's law, the clearer it becomes, we can't keep it. Isn't that true? So you may be thinking, hey, I thought this was the good news of the gospel. 
All you've done is told me I'm a sinner. I'm on my way to hell and I can't make it to heaven because I'm imperfect. Well, that's not good news, is it? I mean, that's not sharing the good news. But here's the good news part. God understood this is where we are. So here's the second thing of the gospel. The second part of the gospel is that God sent Jesus to pay for my sins so that I could be declared righteous. It's not that I'm any better when I accept Jesus Christ as Savior into my life. It's just that I acknowledge that a debt for my sin I could never pay. Jesus Christ paid for it in full on the cross. So let me, let me try to explain it to you this way. Let me give you an example. Let's say that you're just an ornery person. You've lived a life of crime your entire life. And finally, uh, you get caught and uh, you have to go to court and you get convicted. And for all the crimes you've committed, the judge convicts you and he gives you a life sentence, a life sentence. The judge says you're going to serve a life sentence for the crimes you've committed. You know, they have that gavel and he took that gavel and he nailed it and he said, all right, you know, court's over. And then, to the shock of everybody in the courtroom, the judge gets up, he takes off his robe, and he walks down, and he stands beside you, and he says, but I love you, and I want to show grace and mercy to you, so I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to serve your sentence for you. And, you know, what would that be like? I mean, you hear a gasp around the courtroom. And the oxygen is sort of sucked out of the room because what's happened? The judge has actually become your savior. Are you guilty? Absolutely. You're still as guilty as everything. But now the judge has become your savior and he serves your sentence for the sins and the crimes that you've committed and he pays it in full. Now that is exactly what God did for you through sending his son, Jesus Christ. Would you break God's laws and God's penalty? We do. We break God's laws. Notice here in Romans 3, 23, the scripture says that the wages, that's the cost of our sin, is death. That means somebody's got to pay for all the things I've done in my life that hurt other people, that hurt myself, that hurt God, all the things I've done wrong in my life, all the sins I've committed. Somebody's got to pay for them, either me or somebody else. So the judge says, I'll be your savior. I'm going to come to earth in human form. So what God did, and I'm going to die for your sins, Alan, so that you don't have to die and go to hell. That you, if you trust me, you can live with me in eternity in heaven forever. Do you understand why the gospel is called good news? I mean, hello, right? Uh, did we deserve anything like that? Absolutely not. Guys, we deserve to go to hell. And we did, because we're sinful people. It means everything you've done wrong in your life or ever will do wrong in your life has been paid for by Jesus Christ on the cross. When he said, it is finished, he's not saying I'm finished. He's saying, it is finished. Sin has been paid for complete in full. He was the sacrifice that covered the penalty of sin for the world. Your sin, my sin the sins of the world. Romans 6, 23 says this, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Isn't that an amazing verse? He became our savior. I love this verse over in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21. This is what he says. God made Christ who never sinned. Jesus was sinless. The only person ever to be sinless to be the offering for our sin, for your sin, so that we could be made right with God through Jesus Christ. That is such good news. So you can't make yourself righteous. We're sinful. There's, a, you know, there's not a snowball's chance in Hades. You're going to get into heaven on your own effort. It's just not going to happen because you're not good enough. Neither am I. But the good news is God sent Jesus to pay for my sins. Now, if we stopped there, you'd have a lot of knowledge, but you wouldn't have eternity with God. There's a third part to the good news of the gospel, and here it is. I accept by faith what God did for me. I accept by faith. That's all you got to do. This is the requirement to become righteous to get into heaven. 
All I do is accept God's grace, His mercy. I accept God's forgiveness. And I say that I believe what Jesus did on the cross actually paid my sin debt in full. And then God gives me permission to be a part of His forever family. Now, I want you to listen real quick. I don't care what kind of religious background you have. It makes no difference to me. Your background may be Catholic. Your background may be Baptist or Buddhist, you know. You may come from a Muslim family, a Methodist family, a Mormon family, Pentecostal, Presbyterian. You may be an atheist or agnostic or secularist. You have no faith at all. You might be a mix-up of everything. I could really care less because no religion is ever going to get any of us into heaven. Only God's grace can get us into heaven. No amount of works will ever be the a declaration of righteousness on your life, whether it's this guy's list or this guy's list or this religion's list. None of those religious lists are going to get you into heaven. It is simply a relationship to God through Jesus Christ. Here's what the Bible says in Romans 10. If you confess, means speak with your mouth, that Jesus is Lord. In other words, that he is who he claimed to be. That he's the son of God, the savior of the world. He came to die for you. And believe in your heart. Salvation is a heart thing. That God raised Jesus from the dead. That's what Easter is all about, guys. You will be saved. That's what the scripture says. Now, he goes on and he says, for you believe with your heart resulting in righteousness. All right, that's what the Beatitude says. And you confess with your mouth resulting in salvation. Now, because I love you and I can't imagine being in heaven without you, I want you to settle this matter today. Matter of fact, uh, I don't want you to ever, 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 ever doubt again that when you die, you're going to go to heaven. I don't want you to worry about it. I don't want you to be concerned about it. I don't want you to have any doubts about it. I want you to settle it. I want you to drive a stake in the ground to do uh, today. So what we're going to do is we're going to do what Romans 10 says for us to do. We're going to confess with our mouth and believe in our heart and you'll be saved. Notice this verse. Jesus says this. He says, I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. Now catch this. It's important. No one comes to the Father, this is heaven, but by me. So if you want to have assurance and never doubt again that you're going to heaven when you die, what do you do? You accept the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ that we just talked about. This is what we're going to do right now on TV, no matter where you are, in your house or at work, uh, all of our in-person locations, all of you that are watching online today, would you just bow your head with me? Let's just take time out right now. Let's just clarify this. And I want you to pray this prayer in your heart with me right now. Let's just pray. Just something like this. Just say, dear God, I know I'm imperfect. I know I never can be perfect on my own. And yet I thank you for loving me in spite of myself. I thank you that you made me. You created me. I thank you, God, you got a plan and a purpose for my life, and you made me to know you. Today, I humbly ask you to save me because of what Jesus Christ did for me. Not on the basis of what I've done or haven't done, but on the basis of what Jesus did on the cross for me. I put my trust in Jesus Christ, and I ask you, Come into my heart by your grace. Forgive me of my sins and save me. I surrender my life to you, Jesus. Amen. Now, before you look up in this room right here and where you are in your location, if you just prayed that prayer for the first time and you settled it, I, would you, you know, to be ashamed of God is not a good thing. Would you just slip your hand up? I just want to see your hand today that you made sure that when you die, you're going to heaven. Awesome. Awesome. Online, you can just click that little raised hand button. And if you receive Christ today and you prayed that prayer, email me. Let me know that you prayed that prayer if you're watching on TV. All right, so we've clarified that. In the next five minutes I got left, I want to just give you a, a little heads up on this idea of spiritual hungry. So if you were to go to the doctor 
and uh, you had lost your appetite for food, the doctor would say, something's wrong with you, right? You're sick. Now, I've never had that happen. Most of the time he's saying, I'm eating too much. I need to lose weight. But anyway, if you were to go to the doctor and you had a complete loss of appetite, it indicates something's not right in your life. Well, the same is true spiritually. If you don't have a hunger to know God, and something's wrong. You're not healthy spiritually. So I want to finish up today, and you might want to write these down. I want to give you five quick things on how to maintain spiritual hunger for God. Here's the first one. I'm convinced this is the biggie. You got to realize how much God loves you. Now, we just shared how much God loves you in helping you understand the gospel. I mean, there's not a lot of folks wanting to die for you today, okay, uh, who are innocent to take on your sin. I'm convinced if you understand how much Jesus loves you, you would run to him. I mean, it's amazing how much he loves us, the incredible love that Jesus has. So just realize how much he loves you. Then the second thing I would say is we got to develop a hunger for the right stuff. Pastor Steve alluded to this a couple of weeks ago when he said, you know, first thing that most of us do when we get up is what, what do we do? We grab, we grab our cell phone and, you know, we start looking at all the craziness and, and all of a sudden we're feeding ourselves on junk. We're feeding ourselves on junk food, right? In our spiritual life. We got to get rid of the trash. I love this verse out of Proverbs 15, 14. That's what it says. A wise person is hungry for truth while the fool feeds on trash. So maybe you need to take some trash out of your life. What are you truly hungry for? Because whatever you're hungry for is determining the destiny of your life. And I want you to hunger and thirst for God, to be right with God. That's what Jesus says brings happiness. Here's third thing. I would just encourage you, give the first part of your day to God. Now, every time I tell folks to do this, some of you who are night people, you'll say, well, I, you know, I, don't, I, I get up and I go and I give the end of my day to God because I'm not a morning person. Well, you know, I, I, that's fine. You know, I'm not, I'm not here to challenge that kind of thing. But in my life, I've just learned something over the years that if I give the first part of my day to God, it helps me to get in the mindset is I want God to be first in my life. And why do I want this? Well, because Jesus teaches in Matthew 6, This is his words. It's what he says. If you will but seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, there's that word again, being right with him, then all these other things will be given to you as well. So often the things that we need and desire and want in our life, if we'll just put God first, in our time, in our resources, in all the things that he's blessed us with. Man, when we really have God first in our life, that's when we begin to experience life with Jesus. It's amazing. I want that for you. I want you to have a hunger where you get up every day and you put God first. Here's fourth thing. I just challenge you to study God's word every day. Now, now those of you that watch us online, Pastor Tim, our online pastor, man, just uh, let him know today that you would like to have a, um, a Bible study or a Bible reading plan, and, and he'll shoot you one right now. He'll help you understand exactly how you can get into God's Word every day. Because this is our food. This is, Scripture says uh, that this is the milk when we're a new believer, you know, just like a new baby, and it's the meat of God's Word. So this is God's spiritual food for us. And I know you're here this morning at, at all of our locations or you're watching sometime during the week. Now, that's awesome. But you don't eat once a week physically, do you? I mean, you eat multiple times a week. You need to nourish and feed on God's word multiple times because this is your spiritual food. This is how you actually get to be right with God. By reading his word. I love what 2 Timothy, what Paul tells Timothy, and this is what he says. All scripture, every bit of the 66 books of the Bible. It's God-breathed. It's useful for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting, and then notice for training in righteousness. If we want to be right with God, you got to feed on God's word. Just study the word of God. Make some time for it every day. And then finally... I would say if you want spiritual hunger, get around the right influences. Get around the right influences. Now, we know this. Um, we, you know, I got a bunch of kids, and uh, when Bella's buddies are over, or when, especially when Timmy's buddies are over at the house, 
And uh, all that has to happen is one of them says, I'm hungry. And when one of them says, I'm hungry, you know what happens? Every other boy in that, in that house, and there would be five to ten, they're all hungry. Every one of them. And we know all the pizza delivery guys by name, all right? I mean, when it's late and everybody's hungry in the house, we just, we get pizza. Appetite is influenced by association. It truly is. So if you want to keep a spiritual appetite for God, then we do series like Flip the Script where you can come to our in-person locations or join a group online. And hey, maybe you didn't start with us. Maybe you're brand new here at Highlands. It's okay. It's set up to where you can come and you can join a group this week. You can. And man, we all need some people around us who will encourage us to have a hunger for God. In Proverbs chapter 2, verse 20, the last verse I want to share with you says this. Join the company of good men and women who will keep you on the path of the righteous. Spiritual hunger will lead us to righteousness, being right with God. You know, if you hang out with people and all they care about is the stock market, that's what you're going to care about. If you hang out with people, all they care about sports, that's what you'll care about. If you hang out with people and all they care about is, you know, talking about these crazy worldly things, how the world is going uh, terrible ways, that's, that's going to get you depressed. But if you start hanging out with people who have a hunger for God, then you'll get hungry for God. And man, I want you to be blessed. That's the reason we're doing the series. We're going to flip the script and we're going to bless by feeding on God's word, getting around some folks who'll charge us on and help us to understand that we can truly be made right with God. A lot of things have happened today. It's just awesome. Some of you have given your life to Christ. Your destiny has been changed from hell to heaven. Man, all heaven celebrates that. And then for all of us who are followers of Jesus, let's be spiritually hungry for the things of God. Put him first in our life and our life will be so much better. Would you pray with me? God, thank you so much for loving us. <laughs> in such a way that we could never bridge the gap between a sinful heart and a perfect God. And you knew that. And so you sent your only son to die on a cross for us. Lord, that just, I mean, honestly, <laughs> God, that, that just makes us understand how much you love us. And I, I pray, God, that that you might help us to understand every person under my voice today, just how much you care, how much value you've placed on us. It doesn't matter what you've done in your past. Today's a new day. God forgives, he restores, he cleanses. And when the enemy comes to you and says, oh, listen, God's holy and you're a mess. God wants nothing to do with you. You might as well give up. Matter of fact, sometimes we have people who say the enemy comes in such a way that he challenges them, that they've messed up their life so much that they should just take themselves out. And I want to tell you, the devil's a liar. He hates you. He desires to destroy you. The greater is he, Jesus Christ, who can live within you, who can help us overcome, break bad habits. <laughs> who can give us a life that is truly connected to a God who has a plan and a purpose for every one of us. Lord, as we gather in small groups this week, just enrich the conversations. And Father, I pray that for those who have trusted in you this week, that we will come alongside and that they'll let us know they made the decision to trust you and that Lord, that they'll understand they are now a part of your forever family. What an amazing God you truly are. We love you today, Lord. Thank you so much for loving us. In your name we pray. Amen. Hey, what a great message from Pastor Allen. I am loving this series. I hope you're getting a lot out of it as well. These messages are challenging and they kind of all speak to different areas of our life. And, and um, so I hope this was good for you. We've got more coming your way. Uh, next week, we're talking about mercy. Blessed are those who show mercy. And it's gonna be a challenging message. So I just wanna encourage you to continue to connect with us, stay with us. We've got several more weeks as we talked about earlier. And hey, if you made a decision to follow Jesus today, 
today. We'd love to know about that. If you wanna take another next step, we wanna be here for you. The best way that you can do that is to go to the hub and let us know. Uh, there's a section at the top that says about you and we wanna know about you. Share a prayer request, share a need, share something that's, that God's doing in your life. Do you have a great story of, of God's faithfulness? Um, let us know, we'd love to know about that. It's always fun to connect with you uh, outside of these gatherings and I'd love to know that. So if, if there's anything that you need or a step you wanna take, please let us know. The hub is also a great place for you to go to participate with us in generosity. You saw the difference that you are making last weekend as we had all these pastors and leaders from all across the world some of these leaders are training thousands and thousands and thousands of people. It's hard to even fathom sometimes the difference that they're making in countries that we can't even have access to. I think about Pastor Joel and the work that they're doing in Pakistan, reaching into a group in the desert. 300,000 people live there in the desert with very little food and water. And we are going in through Hosea Fellowship to partner with people on the ground and to help feed and, and provide safe, clean drinking water for people that are displaced in the desert. Um, it's just incredible to see God's faithfulness all around the world, and you get to be a part of that. And so if you want to participate with us, go to the hub, hf.church slash hub. You can click on the give button. You can give in like 10 seconds, literally. It's so easy, it's secure, it's safe. And I just would just love to encourage you to think about that, pray about that. If God's tugging on your heart and you want to invest in the ministry, as we're joining God to make a difference in our communities and in our world, you can do that. Uh, hey, thank you so much for being here today. I hope this was an awesome uh, gathering for you. Again, don't miss next week. We're continuing our Flip the Script series. We've got all kinds of great stuff coming up this fall. So stay connected, stay with us. We'll see you next time. I give you my because you still deserve it. Blessing and break it. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy of my soul. Oh, you're so worthy, Jesus. You're worthy. Oh, so we sing. Ooh. How I long to breathe the air of heaven. He fills the street to look upon the one who bled to save me and walk with him for all eternity. There will be a day when I'll bow before him. There will be a day. Join the resurrection.
Christian We sing And stay beside The heroes of the faith And with one voice A thousand generations Shout the name of the